Portuguese prosecutors have officially made a German man a suspect over the disappearance of Madeleine McCann. It's a crime that has haunted one family for over 15 years. Please, if you have Madeleine, let her come home to her mummy, daddy, brother and sister. I'm Mark Williams Thomas, a former British detective turned journalist with over 30 years' experience investigating some of the biggest cases in the UK and worldwide. Just days after Madeline was abducted, I was on the ground reporting. The marina officer needs the access very quickly out to sea. And I've been trying to solve the case ever since. In 2020 came the biggest breakthrough in 13 years. German authorities announced they had a prime suspect. The suspect is a 43-year-old German national. He is Christian B, a sex offender, paedophile and burglar. But two years on, police have not yet charged him. I'll be testing their evidence, uncovering new witnesses and pursuing a meeting with the prime suspect himself to find out if this man is the missing link in the disappearance of Madeleine McCann. Abandoned factory, car, even a little kid's ball. Having visited Christian B's hideout, I now have a real sense of his offending. All kinds of sexual abuse, including with children, animals, and the children were aged between babies and 12 year old. And the crucial phone number ending 683, which police suspect called Christian B 19 minutes before Madeline disappeared is currently owned by a German user of paedophile websites. Child abuse webcams, pedo webcams, little cams. This person who took over 683 is active themselves in a paedophile chat room. But I've also raised doubts that the phone number called by 683 on the night of Madeline's disappearance actually belonged to Christian B. There's not one other person who's come forward and said Christian B was using that number 680. Nobody. Why? Why? As I start to investigate this more and more, the, the, the castle's falling down. Now I'm bringing together the final threads of my investigation, and there's some critical elements to nail. Can Christian B be placed for certain in Prior de Luz the night Madeline was taken? Can we trust his alleged confession to a former associate? Does the evidence he abducted Madeline stack up? And will Christian B now talk to me himself? First, I want to follow up on the crucial phone call on the night of Madeline's disappearance. Police suspect a number ending 683 called Christian B while he was in the Prior de Luz area. My colleague, cyber analyst Martin Kays, has tracked this number to a German paedophile website user and made contact with them. I just want an update on 683. How are you doing? The current user of that account we discussed have basically vanished. They're not responding to emails anymore and their presence seems to have vanished web so what do we know if Christian B was using 680 that would connect him in conversation with 683 user a possible child sex offender the current 683 user denies having the phone number in 2007 when Madeline was taken but the police still suspect that Christian B could have been discussing the abduction of Madeline with 683 on that night. Christian B's online records clearly show him discussing paedophile films of him abusing very young girls. Alec Martin. He shared these images of abuse online via the so-called dark web with other paedophile website users.
Martin is an expert on how the dark web works and he's been trawling paedophile websites and chat rooms to see if he can connect this kind of activity with Madeline's disappearance. What follows is a graphic and disturbing online exchange. Back in 2011, there was a lot of chat around Madeline on the dark web, wasn't there? Yes, the talk about it on the forums was unprecedented. So this is from a now defunct paedophile board. This is a particularly nasty conversation. I only wish that if there are any pictures or vids that they are posted for the whole wide world to enjoy. Yes, I know they'll be like gold, but come on, let us all enjoy it. Sick. There's another user here called Pedo Bear who said, Maddie has obviously been snapped up by a pedo better than us. Oh, that's horrific, isn't it? It's very common for paedophiles to collect hundreds or thousands of gigabytes of images and videos, and then they boast about it. If we look at our suspect, Christian B, we know the material that was found at the box factory had information that he'd shared it with other known paedophiles. Yes. He's an avid sharer of child abuse images. Yes, yes, yeah, sharing and he even sold some. Christian B's offending profile suggests that had he taken Madeline, he may have filmed her and shared the images online. What's interesting is Madeline's picture has never turned up on the dark web. I've done a lot of research back then and again now, and images of Maddie just don't exist. I mean, what does that tell us of the likelihood of it being Christian B? If it was him, he hasn't shared the images, and that's not characteristic of his behaviour. The police have never found any images of Madeline on any of Christian B's devices, but it's possible there are still places to search. Police say they have investigated every address of interest associated with Christian B. But there's another property he rented for three years in his hometown, with a cellar underneath. Jürgen Konstra arranged the lease on the property. Did you ever see him here with anybody else? Also, er war nur mit seiner Freundin hier und war sehr jung. Christian B's allotment in Hanover was searched by German police in 2020, but he also rented this second garden home in Brandsweig. Once it became known that Christian B rented this house, have you had contact with the police and have they now searched this? Den Garten, das hätte ich ja mitgekriegt, wenn sie da irgendwo gebuddelt hätten. So wie in Hannover, wo sie mit dem Bagger waren, das hätte ich mitgekriegt. Jürgen tells me he heard that the federal BKA police visited the site once, but they have never conducted a full search. Have you spoken to the current tenant, whether or not she has given permission for the house to be searched inside? Ich weiß nur, dass sie mit dem BKA telefoniert hat und hat zwar jetzt Antwort gekriegt, dass er kein Interesse hier dran haben. Das hat zu mir gesagt, mehr weiß ich auch nicht. Given what we now know about Christian B and that they searched his other allotment in Hanover, are you surprised that the police haven't searched the grounds or the house? Ja, das hat mich schon verwundert, dass sie hier nicht äh, aufgetreten sind. Also ich habe keinen Kontakt mit der Polizei gehabt. Die haben mich nie irgendwelchen Sachen gefragt. While Christian B was here in 2016, police searched his kiosk apartment and found a film of him abusing a five-year-old girl. They later found over 8,000 child abuse files at a derelict box factory he owned. Then, in April 2016, Christian B suddenly left here, around the time the kiosk child abuse film was discovered. Christian B films his abuse of children. He then collects it and keeps it. We know that because what the police found at the box factory, and the police have ruled this place out. They haven't even bothered searching the garden or the house, which would not take very long. Major failing. Christian B has a profile of a prime suspect for abducting Madeline, but I've been testing the strength of the German prosecutor's evidence to directly connect him to her disappearance. And I get a call from a source close to Christian B who could change everything. We've got someone saying that night they were with him. 
But why hasn't this come out? I can't quite believe what I've been told. That on the night of Madeline's disappearance, Christian B was with a woman outside of Pride de and spent the night with her. And if that's true, can't have been involved in the disappearance of Madeline McCann. I now need to find this woman as quickly as possible and get her to give me her account. There's been a major development in my investigation into whether Christian B could have abducted Madeline McCann. He may have an alibi, a woman he claimed he was seeing the week Madeline disappeared. But before trying to speak to her, I'm assessing the strength of the police evidence against him. Sandra Felgueras is a Portuguese journalist who interviewed the McCanns in 2007. I have known her since the story of Madeline's disappearance first broke. So, uh, 14 years on. I remember the first time I met you was properly at that press conference. And here we are. Still, yeah, and still today, we, with the same questions. Yeah, that yeah. Happened. Yeah. And I'm keen to know what she makes of the German police's focus on Christian B and the phone numbers at the centre of their case. I was very, very surprised when a CB story came up because we've never heard of him. Mm. We were talking to each other. I remember to talk to you. Yeah. Uh, there's any pedophile here? And the answer was, no, of course not. Mm. What do you understand the German authorities have on Christian B that places him in Pride de Luz on May 2007? They say that number belonged at that time to CB. But I don't know which kind of material evidence they have. And they insist Christian B is connected. So I wonder, do you have photos? Do you have videos? I presume, as a reporter, they must have stuff like this. But they've never said. So do you have doubts about Christian B? What's your gut telling you? I think that CB fits the profile but if you can make evidence that that number didn't belong to him, we have a problem. Because all this investigation begins with this statement. So if this is not true, I don't know how, how can they connect CB to that crime. The first and most important allegation in the German case against Christian B remains that a phone number ending 680 places him in Pride de Luz 90 minutes before Madeline's disappearance. But I've now seen a document from a source claiming number 680 was being used by a German friend of Christian B five months before Madeline vanished. His testimony could change the whole case if I could just get him to talk. It's becoming frustrating because I know he is there, but he won't engage at all. I'm told he owned 680, not Christian B. There's only one person that can confirm it, and that is this man here. He is so vital. But can I get him to talk to me? Last throw of the dice. Hello! Oh, there's someone there. A lady. She's coming out. How are you? My name's Mark Williams Thomas. I'm a former British detective and I'm investigating the Christian B case. The man's wife doesn't want to appear on camera, but is happy for us to record the audio of our conversation about her husband's phone use. I've established the crucial telephone number ending 680 was actually his telephone number because he was using that 680 number during the period of 2006 when Christian B was in jail. Does that make sense? The whole time since we are here, he has the same telephone number. And it's not 680? Wait a second. 964. Okay, so it's a different number than that. I've seen it written in black and white. I'm at pains to understand how he would answer the telephone number 680. I don't know. The question is, I suppose, did he have another number or was he with somebody who had that number? Maybe, I don't know. OK, thank you so much. OK. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. 
really lovely lady. She has given me his telephone number. She says for the whole period of time that she's been living here, he's had the same telephone number. But what she can't say is whether he uses another telephone number uh, and communicates on it. She said, I don't know. She said, I would always phone him on one number, but that doesn't mean to say he hasn't got a different telephone number. Just when I thought I'd hit a brick wall with the 680 number, I get a break. Another potential confirmation that Christian B was using 680 in Germany. Just had a phone call from a guy in the bar, and he says there's another man in here who has got Christian B's telephone number. If it's true, this could be a real breakthrough for us, because it could be the 680. He's going to come and meet me down from the bar now. Hello. Hello. Longhurst often helped Christian B out. He drove his Mercedes van to the box factory on one occasion and knew him from the kiosk in town. Ja, ich habe ihn einmal gesehen, bin in den Laden gekommen, in den Kiosk, wollte Tabak kaufen. Und da stand ein kleines Mädchen, das war so sieben bis neun Jahre, schätze ich. Und ist sie rausgegangen und dann sagt er zu mir, die ist aber süß. Die sind, nee, die sind süß, die Kleinen. Und ich sagte, natürlich, klar, ne? wenn sie süß ist, ja. Ich habe mir aber nichts dabei gedacht. Ich weiß nicht, was er dabei gedacht hat. Keine Ahnung. Ich habe die Angewohnheit, ich habe ein Telefonbuch und da schreibe ich immer alle, alle Nummern rein, alle, die ich bekomme. Und da habe ich den wiedergefunden. And that's his, that's his telephone number? Ja. Great. He gives me this number. Kann aber helfen, Christian B. ist eh gestorben. Thank you very much. This is a new number. But of course, years later, not in 2006 or 2007. And so unfortunately, hasn't taken me any further to confirm that 680 belongs to Christian B. But what it's telling me is that Christian B might have had a number of different telephone numbers. And we know that because of the activities he was involved in. So he was exchanging his phones, not regularly, but certainly changing them. I now turn my attention to the police's second major line of investigation. The Christian B re-registered his vehicle in Germany the day after Madeline disappeared. Police say that this red Jaguar is one of the cars that Christian B was driving around that time. He registered it to a new owner, his former friend and landlord, Alexander Bischoff, and to his address near Munich, Germany. And with the help of reporter Dina, we track him down. Hello. The police and prosecutors make it suspicious that the car was registered to you on the 4th of May, the day after Madeline disappeared. Is that suspicious? Yeah, the plan was actually from, I say, from the memory, a few weeks earlier, because he mentioned that it's not going to München now, and that he's going to be there. Das Auto anderweitig zulassen möchte, dass er damit fahren kann und dass er halt flexibel ist. Das hat ja auch Sinn gemacht, nachdem er ja auf Jobsuche quasi war, so wie er mir erzählt hat, hat mir die Unterlagen zugeschickt und ich habe das Auto dann zugelassen. Alexander, did you know about his previous sexual offending, you know, with children when he was living at your place? No. Äh, da muss ich sagen, nein. What do you make of the allegation that Christian B is involved in the disappearance and murder of Madeleine McCann? You spent a lot of time with him over quite a number of years. What do you think? Ich hätte es niemals für möglich gehalten, dass er zu so einem Kapitalverbrechen, also dass man ihm so etwas zumuten kann, das hätte ich ihm niemals zugetraut. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. bye, -bye. As far as I'm concerned, the Jaguar has got nothing to do with it. It's a complete red herring. Yes. It's just simply, he was getting rid of a car and it happened to be registered on the 4th of May. All that paperwork had been done previous to that. The third key piece of evidence linking Christian B to Madeline that I know about is an alleged confession. Helga Bushing, a former friend, claimed Christian B confessed to him while at a music festival. But Bushing did not tell police or anyone else until almost 10 years later. Bushing also testified to police 
that he had seen videos of Christian B sexually assaulting two women. The police have never found the tapes, but Bushing's friend Manfred Seaforth testified in court that they had shown them to a bar owner in the only bar in Santa Clara, an hour north of Praia de Luz. Francis, you used to own the bar in the town. Tell me about that. I did. I used to own a Chaminet in Santa Clara. Do you remember Helga? I only remembered when we went through all my photographs. And I did remember his face. Um, he must have come just a few times. So I'm after information on a very specific period of time, 2006, 2007. Helga Bushell and Manfred both say that during that period of time, they were in your bar and they showed a woman the video of another person being raped that they'd taken from Christian B's house. Is that you? Couldn't have been. There's just no way. Why? I ran the place with my son and he would have called the police. They are very clear that they showed it to a woman in the bar. Did you have other females working? No, there was obviously other women that come to the bar, but I'm the only woman that ever worked there, ever. It's a red herring. If Bushing's sexual assault video testimony is unreliable, it could put into real doubt his account that Christian B confessed. It is really important because Helga is central to the German prosecution's case. He is a key witness. He is the man that gave the evidence to the police that Christian B is responsible because Christian B has told him he's murdered Madeleine McCann. And if his witness evidence in relation to the tapes being shown to a woman in the bar in Santa Clara can be shown to be false, what else of his evidence is false? I now have serious concerns about all three key pieces of evidence I've seen that underpin the German prosecutor's case that Christian B took Madeline. The 680 mobile number may not have belonged to Christian B. Christian B re-registering his car appears unrelated to Madeline. And Helga Bushin's confession claim may not be reliable. So, do the police have other evidence they are not telling us about? Before I can find out, I'm forwarded a letter from Christian B himself. So I'm going to talk quietly because I've just got something which is really, really significant. I've tried right from day one to speak to Christian B and then this morning he's written me a letter. Dear Mr. Williams Thomas, I would appreciate you visit me in my castle to give you the key you are looking for. This really is a massive, massive opportunity for us now to get to the heart of it. He hasn't engaged with anybody until now. The more I look into the German prosecutor's case against Christian B, the more it appears that their evidence is crumbling. I've come to Germany to speak to Hans Walters of the German Prosecution Service about the strength of their evidence, starting with a claim that Christian B received a call on the 680 mobile number, placing him in the Praia de Luz area. Is it possible that 680 was in fact not being used by Christian B? but by somebody else? Es ist natürlich immer möglich, dass äh, ein Telefon von jemandem anders benutzt wird als von demjenigen, der es üblicherweise nutzt. Ähm, ein Telefon kann man verleihen, ein Telefon kann man verlieren, Telefone kann man auch verkaufen. How close can you place the user of 680 to Madeleine McCann's apartment in Praia de Luz on the 3rd of May? My understanding is that it could be as far as 35 kilometers away or it could be six or seven kilometers away from Madeline's apartment. Natürlich ist es so, dass Funkzellen immer einen größeren äh, räumlichen Bereich abdecken. Das ist auch dann tatsächlich äh, davon abhängig, an welche Wett Wetterverhältnisse an diesem Tag. I move on to Christian B's vehicles. The white and yellow camper van, though, was very significant and you did release details of that. What have you been able to establish? 
Aber es ist tatsächlich so, dass diese Fahrzeuge für uns eine große Rolle spielen im Rahmen der Ermittlungen, weil Christian B. eben diese Fahrzeuge in Portugal genutzt hat. Über die Ergebnisse dieser Ermittlungen kann ich aber im Moment nichts sagen. Have you forensically examined that vehicle? And is there a connection to Madeline to that vehicle and Christian B? Was ich sagen kann, ist, dass wir keinen forensischen Beweis haben dafür, dass Madeline tot ist. Zu anderen Ergebnissen unserer Untersuchung kann ich im Moment nichts sagen. Wo der Körper jetzt ist, kann ich nicht sagen. Wenn wir das wüssten, dann hätten wir ihn sicherlich gefunden. So, just to be clear, you don't have forensic evidence that links Christian B to Madeline having been murdered. Wir haben keine forensischen Beweise für den Tod von Madeline McCann. Are you investigating anyone else? No. 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 Just him. Okay. He absolutely believes that Christian murdered Madeleine McCann in Portugal. No doubt about it at all. I have serious concerns over the evidence they have. When you start to narrow down on where that evidence could exist, it falls apart. They don't have compelling evidence in relation to 680 belonging to him. They don't have compelling evidence that 680 was used by him on the 3rd of May. They don't have compelling evidence that he was outside Madeline's apartment. That is all incredibly flimsy. He's pinned his nail on the donkey, and it's probably on the nose rather than on the tail. A huge part of this case rests on pinning down exactly where Christian B was when Madeline vanished. Now I have a chance to find this out. A source close to Christian B has told me that he believes he has an alibi for the night of Madeline's disappearance. He says for a two-week period he was seeing an 18-year-old girl in Carvalheiro, 25 miles away from Praia de Luz. Christian B. He's saying he was seeing a young girl who was on holiday with her parents in this town. And around eight o'clock, most nights, he would arrive in his camper van, she would come out of the apartment, and she would sleep in the camper van with him until the early hours of the morning, and then he would leave to go home. That is his alibi. I'm hoping to question Christian B. face to face, but first, I must see if these claims of an alibi stand up to scrutiny. Up until now, Christian B has not spoken at all about this period of time, May 2007. Of course, 3rd of May, that's when Madeline goes missing. He is saying that during the period of two weeks prior to the 10th of May, he was with a young girl most evenings. I'm told there is evidence of this alibi. He is saying that on the 10th of May, he took this young girl to the airport because she was leaving the country. While she was there, she was stopped for carrying pepper spray. There is a document which puts that date connected to her with her name at the airport. But Christian B is not mentioned in the police record, so it cannot verify his location. But there's more. On the 9th of May, he is saying he got stopped with her in his camper van at a police checkpoint and they took a photograph of both him and her. After Madeline disappeared on the 3rd of May, the police surrounded Pride de Luz with roadblocks. My colleague in this investigation, Portuguese journalist João Godinho, has checked the police records from 14 years ago. Jao, Christian B is saying that on the Friday the 9th, so a number of days after Madeline disappeared, he was with the young girl in his camper van and he was stopped at a roadblock along this road. Were roadblocks happening at that time? So definitely that's possible because after Madeline disappeared, they put them out for days after the disappearance, trying to find any lead Christian B is saying the police took photographs of him, the girl, and the vehicle. You've asked the police whether those photographs still exist. What have they told you? Well, they told me they don't keep records that long. I mean, it was 14 years ago, so they don't have it any longer. What we can't validate is whether or not it happened to him because those photographs don't exist. 
my assumption is that it may be true. It's quite possible. It's possible, but not proven. The best way to test Christian B's alibi would be to speak to the young woman herself. I managed to track her down to Germany in a small, quiet town where she lives now, age 32, with her partner, and I have her address. So literally just up around the corner here is the home address of the most important witness for this whole investigation. I've been here for hours watching the address. And there's been no movement at all. It's a delicate situation. I want to make sure she answers the door so that I can speak to her privately. I'm having to tread really carefully because what I don't want to do is upset or destroy her life, but she is his alibi. And therefore, I need to get to the bottom of that. So my thought is to send her an email. So here goes. I've done it in English, and then I've also done translate in German. Gone. Fingers crossed. I return to the house the next day, but by lunchtime, Christian B's alibi has not returned my email. She may be nervous about talking to me, and her partner may know nothing about her alleged fling. It's a hard decision to make. Do I wait? Or do I go and bang on the door and see if she's there? If she is living with someone, they could be at work and they could come back, and that would then potentially scup her talking to me. She's such a vital witness. Let's give it a go. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. But it's her partner who answers the door. So I am a former detective. I'm investigating Christian B in relation to Madeleine McCann. Christian B is using her as an alibi. Did you know that? Take care, bye-bye. I've managed to get some really important information. I spoke to her partner who has told me that during May 2007, she was in Portugal. He describes it. I showed him a document that says that she was in Portugal, Faro, on the 10th of May 2007. And he said, you've got good information. And I said, well, that's seven days after Madeline disappeared. And I asked him, was she with him that night? And he basically says, she can't be sure. It was 14 years ago, she cannot remember. But he does say, from her account, she was there in May 2007. I'm excited because I'm now filling in those little missing pieces of the jigsaw puzzle that nobody else has got. It's not rubbish, it's not fabrication. Perhaps he is telling the truth. My investigation has revealed that Christian B's claimed alibi is potentially plausible we cannot be sure of the dates. However, it does appear that in the week after Madeline's disappearance, he continued to go about his normal life and his behaviour remained the same. Forensic psychiatrist Dr Ho may be able to assess if Christian B's behaviour is consistent with him having abducted and possibly killed Madeline. Morning, David, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. I know you're busy. No problems. Um, he has worked at Broadmoor Hospital and examined some of the UK's most notorious killers. I just want to pick your brains in terms of the type of individual we're dealing with. Christian B is a repeated child sex offender, but he's never been convicted of murder. Considering what we know of him, particularly the rape, um, which he's serving a sentence for, I think they are elements of psychopathy. So, if he abducts Madeline, and murders her, 
What happens to his behaviour after that? Because we now have this alibi. And she's confirmed that they were stopped at a roadblock, takes her to the airport, doesn't get rid of his car, doesn't make any effort to change his routine. Would you expect that? If he was the one who supposedly abducted Maddie and indeed killed her, you would expect some form of behavioural change because, of course, that's someone who's never really committed that sort of offence. You would expect anxiety, restlessness, perhaps uh, a change in normal routine. Dave is brilliant. I could spend hours talking to him. But what he has done is supported the view that if Christian B is responsible, there would have been a change in behaviour. And what we're being told very clearly is that in the days after Madeline's disappearance and worldwide media attention, he doesn't change his behaviour. He carries on in a normal routine. He takes the girl that he's with to the airport. He doesn't get rid of his vehicle. He doesn't change his routine. That is not the behaviour of someone who's just committed the abduction of a child who is murdered. I've spent four months corresponding with Christian B and he had agreed to meet face to face, but the prisoners blocked our visit, citing safety concerns. So I write back asking for verifiable facts proving where he was when Madeline disappeared. So I've just spoken to the office and a letter has arrived from Christian B. He's answered my questions, four pages, four pages worth. So he's obviously saying something. This story has played out in the media. We've got the German prosecutors making their allegation and we've got silence from Christian B. But now he opens up about the allegations against him and specifically around May 2007 and what he says he was doing. So he says he goes to jail and comes out in December 2006. And from that point on, he does not return back to Pride de Luz. He says from February 2007, he started dealing drugs to people around the beach. Christian B says he spent time on Barranco Beach in his camper van. It's 20 kilometers from Praia de Luz. He's opened up to me and said to me, I was selling drugs on a large scale. I'd make trips back and forth to Spain, six or so times, bringing drugs back, marijuana, making a good living. And when you compare that to his convictions for drugs, that's correct. It wasn't until after 2007 that he started to get his first drugs conviction. This is what puts credibility to his letter. This is a photograph that's been widely circulated, which is his VW camper van. I've done some research as to where that photograph was taken. And I know that photograph was taken at Barranco Beach, and he's now telling me that he was dealing drugs on Barranco Beach. So it ties up. So the alibi. This is where it gets really interesting. So he says that the week including the period of time that Madeline went missing, he met up with a girl, let's call her the alibi, and he spent time with her overnight. He would drive up to Carvallario, he would park up there, she would come out of the apartment where she was for a week, staying with her parents, they'd spend time together in his camper van, she would go home a few hours later and he would stay until around 10 o'clock in the morning and then he would drive back to the beach area. Crucially, Christian B still doesn't remember if he was with his claimed alibi on the evening Madeleine McCann disappeared. And his alibi only covers the hours of midnight to 2 a.m. when he says they were together. But Madeleine was taken two to three hours earlier. He does reveal a key new piece of evidence, a police photograph with his alibi at a roadblock a few days after Madeline vanished. He says he was stopped and there was a person taking photographs. He challenged that person and was told by the Portuguese police 
that that officer is from New Scotland Yard taking photographs. That's giving specific detail which can be checked out because you could go to New Scotland Yard and ask them questions. We've obviously been to the Portuguese, they don't have a record, but perhaps New Scotland Yard do. This letter provides great facts. Is it the definitive version that immediately shuts down the German prosecutor's case? No, it's not. It provides information that can be checked out or could be proved to be wrong. And now the onus is back on the prosecution to check all this out. I have followed this case from the very beginning and have seen how this complex investigation has been a terrible load for the McCanns to bear, something that my friend and fellow journalist Sandra knows only too well. What's Madeline's story? It's more than a story. She's in our lives for the last 15 years. While you don't know what happened, you don't find the truth, you don't know what happened to Madeline. And you live with this doubt in your heart. It's very tragic. Because it's very hard to keep putting questions about the same night always about the same night, the same 3rd of May. Who was there? After six months of investigation, speaking to his alibi's partner and communicating with Christian B himself, does this put us any closer to knowing if he is connected to the disappearance of Madeleine McCann. The whole basis of my investigation has been around to establish whether or not Christian B is responsible for the abduction and murder of Madeleine McCann. I have had the unique opportunity that nobody else has had, no reporter, no investigator, not even the police, to put to Christian B all my evidence and get his response. And his response confirms the evidence I've got from other people. From what I've uncovered, and on the basis that he is innocent until proven guilty, I can only reach one view. My conclusion is that whilst Christian B is a child sex offender, uses the internet, indeed grooms children through relationships, I have real doubts about the evidence that it is Christian B that abducted and murdered Madeleine McCann and we don't know who it is. The person responsible has yet to face justice. And a family still faces pain and uncertainty. In response, the German prosecution has said, Christian B's lawyer, Mr. Fulcher, has said. Christian B has said.